Hello and welcome back to Real English with Real Teachers. Today, Harry and I are back together to give you some real English in a natural conversation, hopefully in an entertaining way. So let's get on with the show, but do know that this was recorded for the British English podcast. So if you prefer listening to it, head over to that, but enjoy the show. You're watching Real English with Real Teachers. Real Teachers. We're going to be talking all about uh, our ideal trips abroad. I haven't even told him this topic, but there we go. What do you think about that topic, Kerry? I like that. I like the topic. Yeah, it was. Uh, it took me by surprise. I like the way you said it. And we're going to be talking about this. It sounded like, but we. I don't know what we're talking about. And then I remembered. Well, it's your podcast, of course. You make the plan. Yeah. So, you know, just take me with you. Yeah, you can sit back, relax. And uh, well, I will need your imagination, though, because I'm going to be oh. prying into uh, your deepest and darkest. Uh, no, no. In, into your imagination, oh. really. Yeah. Oh, dear. Just... Yeah, that's good. Well, I, I will try to be relaxed because the imagination is at its best when one is relaxed. So Absolutely. I will try to stay yeah. calm and mindful and give you my best and yeah hope my imagination can serve you guys this episode comes with a free worksheet over on the website the british english podcast.com so grab that and you can listen along whilst using it um and we can you know edit out any farts if that needs to be done to relax truly yeah okay yeah, yeah. or when i gulp from my shake oh. yeah I mean, that doesn't help relaxation, so I feel like it's not necessarily needed in the sure. process of relaxing, but yeah. Although, there are some good vitamins in there. It's true, yeah, okay. It's all good for the body, good for the what mind. Did, what did you put in your, in your shake? Glad you asked. <laughs> Today, we're going to be talking about Harry's shake. Um, <laughs> I've, uh, it's quite a complex shake. I start with... Um, I fill it up halfway with some kind of milk. Normally oat milk, but today I went with coconut milk. Okay. I then put two heaped tablespoons of oats in. Just, okay. just oats, normal rolled oats. Uh, a heaped teaspoon, tablespoon of peanut butter. Um, yeah, with no added sugar. And then a heaped, <laughs> lots of heaped things. A heaped kind of, like one of those... You know when you put the detergent in the washing machine? One of those kind of spoons. Yes. Those yes. kind of plastic. I think I lost yours when I came to Australia. <laughs> you you were like, yeah, you use my spoon, but can you make sure... Yeah, I want you to wash your clothes, but make sure you give me my spoon back. And I lost it. I knew you would lose it. That's why I was so <laughs> restricting in lending it to you. Oh, that was really funny. So a heaped one of them, a medi medicinal spoon of um, hemp powder protein. Ooh. So it's a whey protein made from hemp, which comes from weed, from mm. cannabis. Amazing. Mm. Um, so I'm flying. <laughs> uh, what else? And uh, sorry, it goes on a while, this. And then a whole, <laughs> a whole banana, a whole banana, which I chop up. Uh, frozen berries. So I've got raspberries in there, blueberries, superfood, yes please, um, and blackberries, all frozen. And then I just, yeah, pop it in here and whisk it up and beat it up in the, um, in the blender. Good. And it's Very wicked. Good. It's a wicked little blender and you can just drink, drink straight from the, the thing. Yeah. You don't need to dispense it anywhere. I love it. Very nice. Yeah. I, I would thing. say it's, it's, it might be a bit of a bitch to clean. Yeah, it is a bit of a bitch. Although we got this technique, you just put it, you fill it up halfway with water <laughs> and a heap teaspoon <laughs> of of washing up liquid, and then put it back on the, you know, on the um, oh, blade. Oh, you put it on the blade. Yeah, yeah, and then that cleans it, or it kind of oh. cleans it, and then you just give it a scrub. And Bob's your uncle. You've um, you've got a clean shake. I thought you were going to say, and you've got a fairy liquid shake. Yeah, down that and get to work. <laughs> down that and then shit your pants in an hour. 
<laughs> I wonder what would happen if you drank or you just vomit. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so <laughs> only one way to find out. <laughs> so yeah, we're not just going to go into your imagination and and start imagining your favourite trip. We've got a structure to this episode. Oh wow, you're so professional nowadays. I know, I know. I've turned over a new leaf. Um, I'm a new man, <laughs> and, and I uh, have a plan. Not and just I have is a it, plan. did you do it on a on a Google Doc or? <laughs> I do have a Google Doc in front of me. Yeah. Um, and actually, a, a student that we both uh, have lessons with helped me create this plan. Um, so I set her a, a homework of creating a podcast similar to the podcast called Off Menu, uh, which is all about food. And they go through their favorite restaurant, you know, the starter, main, pudding, drinks, ambience location all those kind of things and they've got a set mm. of questions but i said let's ambiance. turn that yeah sorry ambiance to be french no, i wasn't correcting you oh. well yeah i like to say ambiance but sometimes i feel like <laughs> i need to you know be less pretentious sometimes yeah it's quite nasal isn't it with that yeah gotta be careful yeah. not well, to actually to be less pretentious i should probably just not use that word shouldn't i it's quite a pretentious yeah. word. Just say Atmos. Atmos. <laughs> the, the Atmos. It's like the opposite anyway, of ambiance. Yeah. The opposite. In terms of like sounding pretentious. Yeah. Atmos couldn't sound yeah. any less pretentious. Just annoying. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit annoying, isn't it? But yeah. So we're we're gonna explain the Atmos, right? Okay. Um <laughs> yeah. and to do that, we've got a couple of questions that will take us through it. So, um, if you will, welcome to the Off the Beaten Track podcast episode. Lovely. What? <laughs> I don't know how I was supposed to react to that. To that. Off, um, off the, off the was Beaten that a, Track. Was that a show? That was a pun. Okay. Now, instead of Off the Menu, Off the Beaten Track show. Yeah. Oh, because it's think? traveling. Yes. No, sorry. Yeah. No, I, I missed the job. It's very good. That's great. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Do you want to say that That's again? Fine. I'll react better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll keep both in. Um, yeah, welcome definitely. to Off the Beaten Track podcast. <laughs> both witty and topical. Carry on. Yeah. Well, <laughs> thank. good to be here. Good to be here. Good. Okay. Well, I'm sure you've thought long and hard over this um, this this idea because I've given you a lot of time to think about it. Uh, mm. So yeah, let's just uh, imagine you're able to uh, go away in your in your own way, do whatever you want, and be with whoever you are with in the in this imagination. Um, but firstly, let's discuss whether you're how you're getting there. And I'd like to ask you, and I'm briefly going to interrupt this episode with today's sponsor. But just know that if you wanted to listen to these conversations without a sponsor, then you can head over to the BritishEnglishPodcast.com and become a premium or academy member and enjoy the full conversation sponsor free. All right, so this episode sponsor, it actually takes me back to the beginning of my online teaching career back in 2014. I know, six to seven years ago now for, for me, as of this recording. But the sponsor's journey started even further back, back in 2007. And because they are coming up to their 14th anniversary, they wanted to do something really special for you as a language learner to celebrate this milestone. So listen up. The sponsor is italki, which is a global community-driven language education platform that connects language learners and lovers, teachers and students together. I have had hundreds and hundreds of lessons as a teacher on italki and a handful of them as a learner. And whilst there are many features on italki I really enjoy, combined, I'd say all of those features give you a wonderful way to experience an immersion in the language and, and culture of your choice. And not that I know them personally, but I get the feeling that the founders of the platform aim for us to learn through personalization and, and to build authentic relationships with other language lovers, 
be it teachers, exchange partners or community members, which is a wonderful way to look at language learning, if you think about it. And uh, their 14th anniversary, or as they call it, italki day, is on the same date as the International Day of Friendship, which is the 30th of July. And that is very fitting, isn't it? So to celebrate 14 years of italki and to give thanks to their users, as well as inviting more language lovers to join italki, they are giving you 140 US dollars worth of italki coupons for free. Mega bucks. No matter if you are new to italki or already an italki user, you have the chance to win $140 worth of italki credits coupons package. So scroll down and click the description box below and you will find the italki link in there, which will take you to the page that explains all that you need to know. Right, that's enough from the sponsor for now. Back to today's episode. Um, but firstly, let's discuss whether you're how you're getting there. And I'd like to ask you, driving or flying? Driving or flying? <laughs> well, at the moment, because we are in a pandemic still, I think I'm probably going to be driving. I want, uh, while I want to use the extent, the full extent of my imagination, I want to be practical and safe. So, uh, and realistic in these times. Otherwise, you know, I'll get depressed. So I'm going to say I'm driving there. I'm driving. Okay, fair enough. Although, yeah. no, it's about and ideal holidays, isn't it? It's ideal. It like, is. Ideally, I'd yeah, rather you're... fly somewhere, to be honest. Yeah, your, your best imagination. Yeah. Right. No, I'm flying. I'm flying. Although I might drive to the airport. Okay. Although the parking, <laughs> the price of parking at airports is just through the roof. So probably, probably be uh, catching a bus or getting a train there or better yet, ask dad to drop me off. Oh, very good. So the ideal start to your holiday is your dad dropping you off at the airport. <laughs> Yeah, I've got low standards, all right? Good. Nothing well, no, the ideal drives. situation would be your dad driving me there. <laughs> and just trying not to you know to to get him to stay awake because I know he has oh. a tendency to fall asleep at the wheel. Yeah, he does. Banter. Yeah, very good. To fall asleep at the wheel. Um don't put Thanks. your jerry can of gasoline at the back or petrol <laughs> if we're British. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, with that ultimatum, no, not ultimatum, this or that kind of question, I was tricking you to see if you wanted any other mode of transport. Boat? Uh, Magic carpet? Oh, uh, right. Well, I guess I'd like to fly, just use my wings. That's my ultimate dream, I think. I, uh, I often have dreams where I'm flying and it's like, and everyone's watching me like, wow, God, he can fly. It's not even a big deal for him. And I just kind of fly around fluttering about the streets of Bedford. And it's great. And it, honestly, this is quite, they're good dreams. They're very good dreams. <laughs> you sure you don't plummet to your death halfway through the dream and wake up? No, it's normally I just kind of start levitating in a very normal situation. Like maybe standing in the line in a bank. And I just start kind of levitating and everyone's like, what the fuck is this guy doing? And that's, yeah, that's kind of a good dream for me. And then I just start flying around. But I, in the dream, I don't quite understand it. I don't, I'm like, what, when did I learn to fly? <laughs> and I've got no wings. It's not like I've got wings in the dream. I'm just, <laughs> just kind of floating about. You're defying gravity. I don't know why I want to know, but what were you hoping to do at the bank? Uh, probably just cash a check. I don't know. Do you still get checks? Uh, yeah, at birthdays, I'll get a check. Yeah, I'll get the odd wow. check. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Do you not get the occasional check? No, even my granddad uh, has now... Uh, updated his payment methods to uh, bank his account payment methods. Is that is that birthday present methods? His <laughs> payment methods. <laughs> Hi, uh, it, as you know, Granddad, it's my birthday coming up. Um, if you'd like to just transfer me 
you know, from fifty pounds and above to this bank account, Swift number. <laughs> oh my no, God. well, uh, it's it's at Christmas, and I shouldn't assume it, but I do assume it. And he gives oh. all grandchildren, nine of us, two hundred and fifty British sterling pounds. Don't know. Oh my God! British sterling pound, British pound sterling. That one. Yeah, pounds. Yeah, British pound, pound sterling. Ster- British pound sterling, yeah. Sure. Sterling. Just say sterling. Yeah. Excuse me. Wow, um, that's a lot of money for nine, nine it, people. Yeah, that's a lot. That's 2,000. <clears> that's 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 2,000 pounds. Um, yeah, is it? No. About that? Nearly. Yeah, I'm over. Isn't it 2.2? 2, 2,250? 2, yeah. Um, Shit, a brick. Yeah, it's oh, a lot. Okay. But uh, it's his way of uh, evading... Um, tax. Tax after he dies. What? Because <laughs> inheritance tax is 50%, I think. 40 to 50%. Or maybe 60%. I think it's 60%. Oh, so he, wow. So really? he's trying to give the younger generations some money, which... Um, is very nice. How depressing is that? You're not even free from tax, even when you're dead. <laughs> it's the only thing you can't outrun, like tax. It's all right, yeah. I'll be dead, and then they can't tax me. Yeah, you have sixty percent tax, Granddad. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to go up extreme. by three. It is, ext- it, is, it, is, it is extreme, but I actually think it's quite good because it allows there to be less extreme poverty and and wealth gap well not if you're poor and your dad leaves you 20 grand and 60 percent of it <laughs> gets taken by the government what the no i think it's that was his nest egg thanks very much <laughs> boris you prick good phrase nest egg what's that um it's it's an amount of money or something worth a lot that you hold on to uh, that you can use later in life to do nice things with or give to your children. Unless Let's go with that. Yeah, yeah. I'll double check know, for the academy members, but I reckon it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I would. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so to um, to travel solo or not to travel solo, that is the second question. Oh, right. That's a very good one. Yeah. So I love traveling on my own. I really love it. <clears throat> So I think ideally I'd want to go on my own, but um, it depends on the kind of holiday. Like if I want to go on a trip where I'm going to different places, traveling, a, if I'm traveling, if I want to go to a couple of locations and just get to know the place, the people, the culture, soak myself in it or soak it, soak as much of it up as possible, I'd rather go on my own. But um, especially if I'm really interested in a place, like I wouldn't want to, go to cuba with marina because she's she's not as into like the culture as i am like i would just want to go to a bar and sit there and listen to music all day and i know that she wouldn't be as into like latin jazz or whatever as i am so i'd feel bad and it would take away from my experience i know that she wouldn't have a great time but then there's other holidays where i'd much rather go with her like um i don't know a really nice beach holiday in thailand or something then i would definitely go with marina so it really depends on the location nice yeah um, that, that's that's fair fair answer yeah uh it makes me want to help you experience this trip to cuba sounds like you'd love it i would love it i would love it it's my the last couple of years i've done nothing but play the bongos and listen to to, to um cuba music and i watch a lot of documentaries i just i love it just the music in particular i'm not so much all about the caribbean food and stuff but um yeah i man i would love it i've got to go should this be your you know location that you're thinking of for this imagination imaginary trip quite possibly yeah yeah i think yeah i think so it scares me a bit the idea of going there because i know it is quite quite dangerous but it's just such an iconic place and yeah, I, I love, I think I'd have a really nice time there. But also Spain is really important to me. I, I love like traveling around Spain. 
I feel really, I feel safe there as well. Okay. So Spain, I was thinking about doing the <clears throat> Camino de Santiago, that, you know, the, the, the big pilgrimage they do. Is it to Santiago? I think it ends in Santiago, not the Chile, but uh, <laughs> in Galicia. Yeah, I'd really like to do that. Didn't you do a, like a section of that? When you I were... saw people walking it when I was cycling to Pamplona. Uh, Pam Pamplona? Oh, right. Pamplona or right. Pamplona? Pamplona, yeah. Pamplona, I think that's right. That's yeah. where they do the ball run, right? Yeah. I think there must have been some people going that way. Because there were people yeah. walking with sticks on the high on not the highways but like the the big roads and I was like, what are you doing? And some people mentioned get a that. life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what the hell are you? Oh my god! Pilgrimage, pathetic. On your bike. Oi. Oh, oh god. Very good. Losers. <laughs> Out the way. Bing bing. Yeah. Okay, so you're going solo. Yeah, I think I, I think, I think so. I love going away with Marina, but you know, I'd like a little trip on my own. Ah, oh, thank you. It's just uh, a note from my dad. <laughs> um, he said, "Piping, come and tell me if it's too loud, Pete." <laughs> He's gonna. I think he's gonna do it downstairs. Should Brilliant. Be fine. Yeah. So if it's if it's well, you can tell me if it's too loud. I'll go and tell him it's too loud. So is he doing his own plumbing? No, no bagpiping. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah. Bag oh right. Piping. Yeah. He, I think yeah. I w Okay. I would assume that bagpiping would probably be pretty horrendously loud, but it's I'll let. Pretty loud. I'll let, let him. Yeah. Let me know. If not, I'll I'll just tell him like, yeah, Dad, wait an hour, and then do it. It's pretty yeah. loud. But he's he's been doing a lot of bagpiping during the the lockdowns. So you know the Thursday NHS clapping. Yes. That everyone was doing here. Um, he would go out onto the street and parade the whole street playing the bagpipes. Amazing. Absolutely. Amazing. It was it was brilliant. It was really good. He'd march the whole way, and, and the neighbourhood loved it. It's there. It goes. Can you hear it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe just for the podcast, hear a couple of seconds of it. There you go. In fact, maybe I'll I'll go and tell him to stop, and I'll take the mic down, and you'll hear it get louder and louder. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Right. I'll go and I'll go and um, tell him to wait an hour. We'll be got an hour, right? We'll, or, we'll or be less. done in twenty minutes. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm yapping on a bit. All good. Right, see you in a sec. Just like half an hour. Yeah, sure. I'm recording sorry. with Charlie. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, and then, <clears throat> thanks for asking. Yeah, oh, half an hour. God, I love it. Thank God, you I love very the much. Giles. Fantastic ending there for part one. Um, remember to grab the free worksheet, which is in the description box of this episode, or over at the British English Podcast.com, along with getting yourself. 140 US dollars worth of italki credits coupons package. To see the link that I'm talking about, click on the um, arrow below this video that expands the description box and you'll be able to see what I'm going on about. Click that link of the italki um, 14th anniversary and then you'll see the page that will explain all. So I hope that makes sense. And I hope you enjoy the massive prize that italki are offering. But that's all for part one of this conversation with Harry. If you wanted to access part two and three, go over to the BritishEnglishPodcast.com and sign up as a premium or academy member and enjoy the transcripts, the extended glossaries, and so much more available for you over on that website. But uh, if that's all that you wanted to join in for today, then thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed listening to this conversation and uh, see you next time on Real English with Real Teachers.